All right, so welcome back. Now we're going to add this idea of the core shadow to uh, some of the drawings that I just did uh, in the block end stage. And then, uh, so we can do these really quickly to give you a basic idea of the core shadow adding. And then I'll do some full demos where we go through the entire drawing process, action, gesture, volume, um, uh, and then block in, and then uh, core shadow. So remember that core shadow is the area of the line as we take a look at the, I've got the ball, the sphere up, and also now the image of the, uh, the figure that we're drawing is where that line ends and the shadow begins. That border or boundary is where the darkest parts of the shadow are. Now I see a lot of information up here in the hair. I get a lot of talk on hair. And we'll get to hair, uh, you know, a little bit later. But there's not a lot of what we'd call just core shadow up in the hair. That takes a lot of just rendering through some of that detail. But if we come across her hair in through here, she's more in shadow up at the top and on the edge, kind of like a ball. So we could block in a little bit more and add a little bit deeper core shadow in kind of where this hair splits running through there. That will be kind of a core shadow-esque area. And that's about all you really could do with it until you really go into distinctive parts of her hair, her hair detail, and that's really not what this particular lesson is about. Next is coarse shadow. We see a little coarse shadow here, so we can go a little bit darker with our shadow, and you can see it makes a little reflective light. You get two for the price of one with coarse shadow. You get the darkest core, and you get that beautiful turn away from the light into the shadow, and you also get this back area if I catch this edge a little bit, take back through here, back to her shoulder, you get this wonderful reflected light on the edge back in through here. So that's what that coarse shadow really does. It turns, turns the form. So here I can add it. This is probably great, great, most distinctive area to add. It's right in through here on the model in this area where we see her turn, her body turns into the shadow from the back and you can get even more distinctive. So we can add this coarse shadow coming down her body form, defining her erector spinae muscles down the uh, back of the figure, all the way down into the dimple of the sacral area in through here. And even on the glute, the right butt cheek area, we can start to see this happen. You can kind of, you can also give some kind of contouring up in through here as well as you kind of come around the, the figure and the form. But really see how really quickly adding that gives you that distinctive turn. And we also see now core shadow of the model over here as we come out of the light into the shadow, that change right in through there is going to be soft and supple, but it's also going to be quick. We're coming in from a form shadow in through here which is a form shadow, so really turning into a little bit of a cast shadow into the divot of the spinal trough of the back where the erector spinae muscles end and really the, the uh, spinous processes of the, of the vertebrae come through a little bit in through there. So we get this nice core shadowing in through here, okay? And we work to blend that. You can see where that kind of banded area comes over a little bit through there and runs through <clears throat> and we can start to add it even a little bit further okay so we can come through and work that core shadow right in through there that pencil is a little bit too hard for that so you want to get that softer pencil for these these forms in through here so core shadow coming through and we get that nice turn of our form this softening of, of that and then blending it back into the light a little bit to here to give her that nice kind of lightly blurred banded look of the form and it can extend further over into here as well <clears throat> all right so we see a little bit on the arm over here cast shadow and a little core shadow. And that's pretty much the major parts of her core shadowing area right in through there. So let's go on to our next model over here. 
And we can just start to distinguish that a little bit further with coarse shadow. So delineating the uh, next pose, let's do the same thing. So we know that the light source is coming from above here, right? And so we know that these coarse shadows are going to fall generally um, where the opposite of the light source is. So that's going to be lower down below. So we can start to see them. We'll find them and we'll put them in. So coarse shadow here on the deltoid area where the scapula comes into the clavicle. And you get a nice coarse shadowing also down her arm and through here, that banded area, very soft area of her arm in shadow to give you that reflected light too as well. And coming down it gets a little bit more diffused right in through there. Her shadow of her head, since she's all in shadow, can will go a little bit darker even though it's not necessarily a core shadow, but we'll get that further and we want to continue to catch that edge as we draw here coming over, getting a little bit more of the back of the model coming down. Now, strong core shadow here underneath the lat area, right in through here, the top of the lat, coming down, really turning in through here, and then going to ease up and give you reflected light. Then you're going to get a little bit of darker core where the casting of the shadow is, and it's going to be a little bit darker in that brush shape. There's a secondary core shadow in that reflected light in through here to, to distinguish that lat and then the rib cage, the serratus anterior a little bit to distinguish that further. We'll add the core shadow in through here. can go pretty quickly. It's very, it can be very painterly. Dark banded area in through here. <clears throat> right through there, then we'll get a little bit of under core shadow, mostly cast shadowing in through there, back and through, back and through on the knee. And look how that really starts to illuminate the model further. Now there's a strong core shadow area with the leg in through here. We can start to add that. You can kind of go in two directions. You can kind of go uh, horizontally here, or you can start try to kind of give a contoury choppy Kind of a shorthanded approach to that. What you want is you've got to have that core shadow darker than your initial block in, and it gives you two for one. That means you get the reflected light as well of the model, which is going to be so important to turn and really give you that pop to, to turn the model's form and really make it. Uh, three-dimensional quite, quite often. You follow the form, follow the shape of those core shadows, and you can tell right immediately then how much more of a uh, illusion that we start to get into the model models form as well. And that takes care of most of the core shadow of that of that particular pose as well when you put all this in a little bit more shadow too as well. And it gives you that already that kind of pop. And there's there's much more we can do now in these more secondary values later on and we'll get to that as we move through uh, the model and the figure. So let's go on to a couple more that I did earlier and we can quickly add those and then we'll go on to some longer deeper poses with our model, with our models, and continue on our way to getting into highly developed figure drawings and core shadows. All right, let's add now the core shadow of this particular drawing and model. So we've got the light source coming now from the right in about medium height. So it's a little bit lower light. You can tell by the cast shadows in the photo of the legs. I cut the legs off uh, a little bit there but we can begin to see where that light emerges in those as those cast shadows pull back in this direction we can again tell where our light source is so we know that our then our core shadows are going to be opposite that so if we have a light source here right coming in this direction the shadows are going to be in opposite of that and then of course you can create kind of a ball there 
course, a cast shadow would be like to uh, in that direction, the left direction as well. So always opposite of the light, light source. All right, so let's let's find our, our core shadows here. So coming down, core shadow down the back a little bit, but especially now in the bicep, tricep, deltoid, upper arm region, and through here, core shadow there, coming over to the lat, we'll catch a little bit of an edge, coming over, core shadow here, <clears throat> nice core shadow read there, coming over, down through a little bit, and again, that core shadow will give you that darkest part of the shadow as it turns the form, and then on the back side of the uh, uh, shadow, we're going to get reflected light out of that, which is a pretty, pretty nice thing to have as well. To <clears throat> so we have this coming up, and then we'll separate these two just a little bit more. They kind of group. We can kind of group together group them together and then you can separate them forearm in through here and then over back and then we'll put a little tone there to separate and through and we'll just keep these very simple grouped shadows kind of grouped together through there as well and the hand would be over here kind of this gestural and through there so we're going pretty fast on these now core shadow here where we have a little bit of the bulge of the abdomen coming through here and over. Catch his back edge a little bit. And you can see his spine just emerge from that darker shadow into that lighter reflected line and up and over to his neck and then through to his head. Go there. <clears throat> We'll leave that kind of alone for now. We'll get into the detail of further. We can add a little bit of a cheek structure in through there, but core shadow here, core shadow here on the oblique, getting into the back part of the buttock to the lat, back to the glutes here, core shadow. And again, you see how that makes that nice back uh, part of the figure a really nice uh, reflected reflected light, which is what we want to get to here. So we get the buttock coming back through, a little bit beefier here now. We can get a little bit more definition in the shadow. You're not really lingering in the shadow that much as we really are learning to turn the form in a very quick step from a flatter block into a really gorgeous uh, beginning understanding of the turning of the form in dramatic, more dramatic lighting, whether it's outdoor or indoor. Outdoor, you're going to have more softer, diffused lighting. And in outdoor, uh, outdoor you'll have softer, diffused lighting. Excuse me, indoor can be more dramatic. So we generally tend to train artists, at least here at NKU, a little bit more with indoor lighting because it's just easier to control. Now, there's a lot more detail in the quads of the of the leg muscles, but we really don't want to go there yet. We want to always want to catch our edge, but we just really want to make sure that we have getting the beginning understandings of core shadow, where they're at, and then we'll slow this down even further and we'll get to um, a yeah, longer drawing process where we do this all again. It's good to see it all together for those of you, my students, but also these, those of you out there in YouTube, YouTube land. That's kind of what I call it. C2 land. So, core shadow here, the light source coming here, right? Core shadow. The opposite way. You see it on the model, but you can also create it on your own later on if you don't have a model. You can get the tibialis anterior extensor digitorum longus coming through down to the tibia fibia, the fibia area. Core shadow down to the Achilles and down to the heel, which is off the page a little bit. Finding that shadow shape, keeping those edges blended back into the line, also back into shadow. That's where students get into a little trouble is they make that a hard edge. Now, most of this over here is in reflected light, so it's just darker cast shadow over and through here. So we'll throw the beginnings of that. You'll see how I can make this back leg, really make this buttock glow 
because it's in reflective life, by putting a little bit more tone back here on it. Catch the edge, catch the edge, in through here and over and around. through here, there we go, and then we're going to come over and around, and then now we have a strong core shadow on this calf muscle in here, so we can get this cleaned up a little bit, bulkiness of the calf turning around a little bulky down the medial head, more so than the lateral, and through, and then we catch that block in and over. <clears throat> down through and then catch the heel foot coming back on over and disappearing kind of behind its calcaneus area self Achilles in through here and then you can see where I can really hit the core shadow now where it's really turning bulking here that fatter part of the form of the shadow as it turns away from us into into the light right in through there it shows up on camera pretty well and you can get a much more forceful you know, rudimentary light and dark drawing. There's still a lot of things to do to this drawing, but it gives you the, the force of that. Okay, I think that's enough to give you that. So what I want to do now is to now go on and to now uh, go to new poses that we haven't seen and then start afresh, start anew, and uh, work from the very beginnings of a drawing, lay in, line lay in, action gesture, volume thinking, block in and then course out so we can see it all even further together. Okay, let's go on to that.